Hello again, and welcome to another FMOD and Unity tutorial. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at something a little bit different. We're going to be diving a bit more into FMOD. Um, we're going to be looking at signal flow and buses in FMOD. And I'm going to show a little example of how you can use them within Unity if you wish to adjust them in the game. Um, but first, let's sort of talk about what they do and how they work and, you know, the things we need to know before we start using them. Um, so first let's talk about signal flow. Signal flow is basically the direction in which your audio takes to get from the audio file to the output of FMOD and your speakers or your headphones or wherever you've hooked up to your, you know, your laptop or your computer. Um, so it takes into account, you know, what events it's going through, any buses um, which we might want to add, any effects we've added and so on. Um, so I'm going to be looking at the footsteps uh, that we've added to this project um, in previous videos. If you like, I'll put a link somewhere on the screen or in the description if you want to check out how we made footsteps in Unity. Uh, but I'm just going to talk about how um, their signal flow works in this project. Um, so first, let's have a look at the multi-sound. So the multi-sound we added in another video by right-clicking um, in an empty space and bringing that up. And then we can drag in... Um, our audio files like we've done before. So the first, so the signal would start with this sort of multi sound where all the audio files are contained. So they'd start there, they'd then go to the wood channel and start here where it says in. Uh, then from in, they'd travel uh, along here to where it says out, and you can add sort of effects and sends and sends we're going to be talking about in a bit. You can add stuff um, to that signal before it reaches out. Um, then the wood channel would then reach the master channel and again the same thing it'd start at end any effects we added it would be processed into it and then it would end up to the out position here um, one thing to note is that anything we add to the wood channel would obviously only affect uh, the audio under wood um, for example if i added a reverb here or a flanger here anything we played any metal sounds that got played would not be affected by that because we've added that to the wood channel but once it gets to the master channel, anything we add here will affect all of these because they're all being routed to the master channel, obviously. So that's how signal flow works within events. Um, but once it reaches the end of the master channel in the event, uh, it then goes through to this other window called the mixing desk. And to access the mixing desk, we want to click window and go mixer. There we are. So as you can see, this is the mixing desk right here. I've got a few, these are all called buses. I've got a few set up here, which I'm going to talk about in a bit. Um, as you can see on our left, here is our event. And when you first open this, uh, you'll probably just have all your events laid along the here. You won't have any um, of these white group buses, but you will have one reverb return bus, which I will talk about in a sec. Um, but the idea of the uh, mixer is that our events are now going to go from the master channel in our event, um, they are now going to end up to the master bus, and then that is what's going to be sent out through our speakers. Okay, But before we send it to the master bus, we can add, if we like, any buses in between. So there are two types of buses we can add. The first is a group bus, which you can add by right-clicking over here. Click New. I'm going to call this one Player Sounds. And I'm going to drag the footsteps event into it. There we go, just like that. Uh, so now uh, the event will travel through the player sounds group bus and then into the master bus. And as you can see, we can add effects and stuff into the group bus. So anything that comes in through here can get processed and then come out and then we'll go through the master bus. The thing with uh, the thing was good about group uh, buses is that you can send multiple things to the group bus. So for example, uh, if I go to other. In fact, if I go to test sounds, you can see I've got multiple events going into the test sounds bus. And while I'm not doing any processing with that bus, if I wanted to, I can add effects or send them somewhere else, um, and they'd all be affected by that. Okay, so that's group buses. Um, next, we have our return bus. And as you can see here, I've got a return bus called Reverb. Now, like I said earlier, when you open up the mixing desk window, you should have this already. And I'll have some default settings for the Reverb. Um, the idea of a return bus is that you can send a signal to the return bus and then to the master bus, but it does it keeps intact the original signal. So if I, say for example, if I deleted this, let's get rid of the uh, group bus. If I wanted to send this event to the return bus, I can. I can just click plus here 
add send, and I can click to mixing desk reverb. Alternatively, I can create my own new re return bus, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to send it to the uh, reverb. And then I can add a signal strength to that. So let's just put it at zero. So what's happening here is I'm sending a signal to the reverb return bus. Okay, so it's now being sent into here. Um, but while it's doing that, uh, the original event signal is still being sent to the master bus. Um, so we'll we'll have two signals essentially, one running through reverb, one running without. So let's try and demonstrate this. If I come over here, I'm gonna quickly loop these sounds. Let's let's play the sounds. Okay, so I'm gonna set this metal to loop. You can already hear there's some reverb on it. Um, and in fact, you can see the send that I've added here to the event. Um, I'm going to jump into the mixing desk and I'm going to turn the uh, fader down on the return bus and you're going to see that you can hear both signals as I do so. So let's hit play. So here's our return bus. So if I turn this down, we've still got that original signal from the event being sent to the output. But if I turn it up, We've now got both the dry original signal and the reverberated signal. Okay. So hopefully that gives you a clear idea of how the buses work. That's a very simple way of putting it. Um, if you look on the FMOD TV channel on YouTube, uh, they'll go into a little bit more detail about how these work. In fact, I'll probably put a link in the description for you. Uh, but like I said, I want to show you a way of how you can adjust these faders uh, in Unity. Um, if for some reason part of the game you want maybe a group send or uh, a bus send to change slightly okay so we're going to do that um, in fact before I do that a few things I'm going to quickly talk about uh, these bits up here in particular so if you want to view all your buses you just click on mixing desk selected buses anything I select here will appear in the selected buses you can also add your own view by clicking add mixer view call it whatever you like and then you can simply drag stuff in uh, to that mix of views. So that's just a way of organizing all your buses. Um, but I think that's everything I wanted to cover. Snapshots. Hopefully snapshots um, is something I will be able to cover in the future because I really want to get into them. They're really cool to mess around with. Uh, but not for today. Like I said, this is just going to be a little basic introduction to the mixing desk uh, and the buses. So uh, let's now jump over to Unity. So as you can see here, this is the bog standard level I always use in my, in my videos. Uh, the one thing I've added is this little basic dark room um, with a little light in. Now what I try to do is create a reverb zone, a very basic reverb zone in that if I walk into it, uh, the footstep sounds that we heard should have that reverb added to. Um, so if you come, if I come over here, as you can see this is my reverb zone, this is where I've added the script which I'm going to jump into in a sec. These are my walls of my little hut I've made. I don't know what to call it, to be honest. If I quickly get rid of them, though, you'll notice that the reverb zone, all it is is a trigger box, and that's how the script works. It just basically works on, on trigger enter, you know, stuff happens. Um, so let's quickly demonstrate that for you. Let's put our, let's put our little shack back together, and I'm going to quickly play the scene so you can see what I mean. So here's our little game. So as you can see, our footsteps from the footsteps tutorial, which again, I'll throw a link on the screen for you to click on if you want to check that out, how we made the footsteps sounds. They're still intact. We've got our concrete, our wood, and our grass. But now if I walk into here, oh, the footsteps have become reverberated. And if I walk out, they become dry again. So let's have a look at how I did that. Where's my script? Here we go. So this is the script I used. I just attached it to the trigger box. Um, so the main thing I wanted to show you is this bit, this bit, oh, whoops, this bit, and this bit really. So basically what I'm doing is I've created my own uh, custom class, uh, an fmod class, but I just put in fmod.studio.bus and then I've called it reverb. So by doing this, we can use this to um, call upon uh, a bus in fmod. As you can see here, I've linked it. I've linked the reverb custom class to the reverb uh, bus. Um, similarly to how we can call on specific events by typing event, then putting a colon, a forward slash, and then the name of the event, we could do the same with buses. And we could do the same with either return buses uh, or group buses, as long as we get the name right, okay? 
So that's what I've done here. I've said that my custom class reverb is linked to uh, that bus. So just use that line equals that, and then obviously change that according to the name of your bus. Once we've done that, in the update function, or in any function we like, I've just done it in the update function because I want it to constantly check, uh, we can say set volume of that bus. Um, so I've created a custom float called volume, uh, and I've just said for every frame, I want that float to equal the um, volume of the bus. Uh, the trick is with this, um, I think if you, zero is going to equal, if I jump back into fmod, when, the, when that float is zero, that's going to equal that, right? There's not going to be any signal coming through it. But when that float equals one, that's going to be max volume. I'm not sure if it means max volume on zero dB or 10 dB, but it means max volume. Uh, so bear that in mind. Anything in between, you want to use point values. So let's jump back into the script. Uh, as you can see here, I've just used a ball to check if um, the player is in the reverb zone. I'll just put in verb zone. That's my ball. And I've said, if that's true, uh, I want to perform this. As you can see, I've used the mathf.lerp um, mechanic, as I've done in the previous video, which I'll stick a link on the screen for you to check that out, how we use that. Um, so this is a way of fading between values, so it doesn't snap instantly and sound a bit awkward when we you know, move into the reverb zone. The um, reason I did this is because, um, because we're not using a parameter, I don't think there's any way to control that fade. There's no sync speed option when we're just controlling the faders on buses. Um, I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure there isn't, hence why I've used this. Uh, and then the rest of it is simple. On trigger enter, uh, I want that ball to be true, so this activates. And then when I leave, I want it to be false, so I want this to activate. Okay, Very simple stuff. And yeah, that's all there is really to it. So if you have a bus channel that you'd like to you know, alter somehow within the game while it's running, you can use this. So you can create this class, name it, make sure you name your bus correctly, attach it to the class, and then you can set the volume. Alternatively, there are a few other things you could do with it. So for example, if I type reverb um, dot, I think there's set mute. So if I wanted to mute a bus, I could do that. And then again, I think you just add your custom, you had a custom variable of some type. There's set mute, there's set pause, and I think there's a few other things. Um, I'm gonna put a link in the description for the um, FMOD documentation where you can look all that stuff up. Um, so yeah, I think that's all there is to it. Uh, like I said earlier, I want to try and look a bit more into the snapshots because they're really cool to use. Um, this reverb zone idea, whilst it works in this demonstration, I wouldn't really recommend you use it um, within a game, unless the game is very basic. Um, what I mean by that is, whilst it works when my character walks in and out, say my character was outside the reverb zone, but an AI character, like an enemy, walked into it, we'd still expect to hear that um, reverberated sound from the player. Uh, sorry, not from the player, from the AI. However, in, due to the way I've set this up, we're either going to hear um, everything become rever reverberated, assuming you've set everything, assuming if we go back to FMOD, you've sent all of these group channels that you've made, or all the events, to this reverb um, return in case they enter. Um, either that's going to happen, um, or uh, I forget the other option, but <laughs> basically it needs a little tweaking because obviously... You know, because we're adjusting the whole fader and not the sends directly, you know, either the reverb's on or off. So in this case, it works, but, you know, I might try and do another tutorial on how we can make, you know, a better reverb zone um, using FMOD for, you know, for bigger games where there's different, you know, game objects that could enter the zone. Um, but I think that's it. As usual, please let me know if there's anything you want to see, because I'd love hearing your suggestions. Um, and any requests, I like the challenge of it, see if I can, you know, help you guys out, that's always good. But other than that, I think that's all there is to this. So like I said, this is just a basic introduction to buses, and hopefully we'll move on to snapshots and stuff, and some other stuff we could do with them. Um, so, I've been Henry Scott, and thanks for watching.